This is my review of the Pink Floyd album, The Delicate Sound of Thunder. Uh, it was released in 1988 and produced by David Gilmour. So I'm reviewing the uh, newer version of this. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it has, if it's called like something else, but it's, I think, been remixed and remastered and stuff. Uh, the, so like this, this album, this is the only version of it I have. I never got the original version just because, uh, well, mainly I heard it wasn't very good through just reading reviews, and um, also I just, I was never that interested in it because one, I had, um, I had the Pulse DVD already, so I already had something of the kind of three-person uh, three Dave Gilmore led Pink Floyd live, uh, so I really wasn't that interested in this album because it, I mean, it has a lot of momentary laugh stuff on it, which is like my least favorite songs from Pink Floyd, so I just never got the other version. I listened to a little bit of it tonight, um, and I do think that this version sounds a lot better than what the original version did. It sounds like they kind of did some work on this and fixed a few things here and there um, for this remix scene or whatever. Not sure exactly, but there's definitely there was definitely some points where I could hear it sounded like Gilmore go a little bit like off in his singing in the original version that I didn't notice on this version. So. Um, but this one, as it is, sounds pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty decent, like, live show. I don't think, um, well, I guess the thing I was going to rant about in the Pink Floyd albums was that until recently they didn't have a lot of uh, live stuff that they had released before this, you know, three-person Rogerless Floyd. Uh, they just uh, put a bunch of stuff out on streaming platforms, though, of, like, Dark Side Live and things like that. So it's not really a problem anymore, but they... I don't think you can buy them like this, which I, I wish you could, but, um, so yeah, I don't, uh, just not, not really like an album that I had a lot of interest in getting originally, but listening to it, it's not that bad, um, I'm gonna read through the track listing really quick and just kind of comment on them if I can think of anything, uh, so they do Shine On You Crazy Diamond, they do like the whole thing. I think that's kind of the highlight of the album that opens it, and uh, then they go into Signs of Life, which also I think um, this version has some songs on it that weren't on the original. I'm not really sure which those are, other than I think this one wasn't on here, because I remember that from uh, when I was looking at the track listening briefly while I was listening to some of it, the other one on Spotify earlier. Uh, anyway, Signs of Life is, you know, is what it is. Then they do Learning to Fly, that's also kind of a minor highlight for me. Uh, yet another movie, Round and Round, uh, New Machine Part 1, Terminal Frost, A New Machine Part 2, Sorrow, Dogs of War, I'm Turning Away, and that's the first disc. I think that, I don't know, some of these songs, they sound a little bit better live than they did in the studio album, but they're still songs that just aren't that great. Uh, the second disc starts with One of These Days, which is cool, uh, Time. On the Run, which I'm not, I'm not really sure why they did On the Run, like, it's, I mean, I don't have anything against it, and it's fine, you know, within its place in Dark Side, but it's like a standalone song, it's, it's kind of just like, I don't know, it's not really something that great, I don't think so, I don't know why you just do that live, um, they should have done like, I don't know, something from the Sid Air, or, or in its place, or something like that, uh, and then uh, the great gig in the sky, which I think works better, you know, with the, the vocals in the studio. <clears throat> uh, then wish you were here. Welcome to the machine, which was cool. Uh, Us and them, money. Another brick in the wall part two, which I don't really like the way they do it here. Now I don't really like the way they do it on Pulse, but I should talk about that when I get to Pulse. Uh, comfortably numb, one slip, and they close with run like hell. So overall. Not a, it's not a great live album because it's got way too much momentary lapse and it is like you know the, the three person Floyd so they got like like an army of extra musicians helping them out and I can't really you know you can't really tell who's playing what um, so that kind of bugs me a little bit which it's I don't know it's weird when that bothers me and doesn't bother me with bands but it kind of bothers me with Floyd for some reason uh, and. I don't know, other than that, I think that this version, like if you're interested in a live album from around this time and you like Momentary Lapse, then this would be a good album for you, but uh, 
I don't know, the, the original version of it, I think that this is a pretty big improvement over from what I listened to, which you know, wasn't the whole album, but this definitely sounds a lot better than that one, so. Delicate Sound of Thunder, um, probably not an essential live Floyd album, but if you really, really want to, check it out. 